ونستعين ونصلي على الحبيب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. So my brothers, I think the golden question now is, okay, so where to now? Where do you start? My brothers, wallahi, there's, there's got to be a million theories. I'm sure if you grab the 100,000 ulama and told them, okay, give us a solution, I'm sure you're going to come up with 100,000 different solutions. My brothers, the most practical one that comes to mind is first and foremost, we need to start turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to start making some serious changes in our lives. Some serious changes. We need to turn back to Allah and we need to turn back to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reveals to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. He says, O oh Muhammad, today your religion, my religion has been made complete. You know, a Jew came to Umar ibn al-Khattab. He says to him, O oh Umar, there's a verse in your Quran. Listen to this Jew. Yes, he says to Umar ibn al-Khattab, he says to him, uh, Umar, there's a verse in your Quran. If it was revealed to us, we would have made its day of revelation a Eid. I remember hearing this story automatically. I started thinking, oh, which verse, which, which? Not Umar ibn al-Khattab. So Umar ibn al-Khattab didn't give him a chance to breathe. He says to him, oh Jew, I know which verse you speak of. You say you would have made its day of revelation a Eid. I tell you, its day of revelation is two Eids for us. It was revealed on the day of Jum'ah, which is a Eid. And it was revealed on the one and only Hajj of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is another Eid for us. He says, the verse you speak of is, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum islam al that today your religion has been perfected, it's been completed, and I have bestowed my, my mercy upon you and my favors upon you, and I have chosen Islam as my way and my religion. So why is this verse so important? Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes such a statement, He's saying that your religion has been perfected. Whether you live in stone ages, whether you live in the rocket ages, no matter what ages you live in, your answer, your solution to whatever harm, to whatever, whatever mishap, whatever difficulty comes your way, your answer, your solution is the deen of Allah and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And if you look and if you turn towards anything else, then Allah himself will disgrace you. Don't wait for the Jew to Allah himself is going to disgrace you because you opted for something other than his way. You opted for something other than the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This, Allah himself will disgrace you. So our answer to any problem, be it yourself, be it your couple as a you know, husband and wife, be it as a family, be it as a community, be it as a country, be it as an ummah at large, any problem that comes our way, our solution is the deen of Allah and his prophet. Anything else, you're going downhill, Habib. Paint it however you want. We came to change the world. We have the answers for the misery of the world. But the Muslims have left the way of Muhammad وسلم, and they've turned to other means. My brothers, my time is short. I want to leave with this hadith. And this hadith, in essence, Rasulullah is speaking about da'wah, giving da'wah. But why is this relative? You'll understand when I say it. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the authentic hadith, he says, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ Look how it starts. Yani automatically, he's hit you for a six. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is taking oath by Allah, he says, by the one whom my life is in his hands. Does Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam need to take an oath? Does he? Does he need to say to me, Wallahi, this is... No. He says, Wallahi nafsi bi yadi. Lata'murunna bil ma'arufi wa lata'nhawunna anil munkar. 
He says, you will enjoy good and you will forbid that which is evil, meaning da'wah. You will get out there. You will be active. You will be talking about Allah. You will be talking about the humility of this world. You will be talking about death. You will be talking about his prophet. You will give da'wah. You will stop that which is wrong. You will, you will enjoy that which is good. He says, he says, if you don't do this, then verily Allah will send down a punishment upon you. He says, and when this punishment will come upon you, you will raise your hands to make dua to him and Allah will not accept your dua. My brothers, there was 5 million people in Hajj this year who raised their hands and cried, cried, cried. Oh Allah, this Ummah, oh Allah, Syria, oh Allah, Palestine. Cried, they bawled their eyes out. Yet Allah hasn't answered their dua. I want to ask you, and excuse me for being a bit vulgar. Yani. Is Allah deaf? Yani? Allah can't hear their cries? Is Allah blind? Allah couldn't see him? But there's a condition, my brother, that you need to fulfill before Allah can answer that dua. So my brothers, our answer is clearly, purely turning back towards the deen of Allah and the sunnah of his beloved Prophet.